Swedish Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson has pushed back against Russia's demand that NATO rule out future eastward expansion, underlining her country's right to set its own alliances. Sweden's top diplomats underscored that Moscow has no right to dictate which countries can apply to join the transatlantic military alliance. Sweden, along with neighboring Finland, is not a member of the Security Alliance. Although Sweden has no current plans to join NATO, it has deepened its cooperation with the bloc in recent years. Russia's recent threats to Ukraine have spurred conversations about regional security in northern Europe and the Baltic states. Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson said, the European security order is non-negotiable. In Sweden, it is we ourselves who get to decide on our foreign and security policy and who we choose to cooperate with. International rights must be respected and followed, she added. These include every state's right to independently set its own direction in security policy. Similarly, Swedish Minister for Foreign Affairs and Linda said, it should not be up to Russia if we could join or if we could not join NATO. She described Moscow's demands to curtail NATO's activity as astonishing, noting they would have profound consequences for Sweden's security if they were accepted. Defense Minister Peter Hultvist also told that Russia's actions threaten the entire European security order. The minister also discussed Russia's demands on NATO and the current situation at the Ukrainian border. He said, Sweden needs to be able to cooperate with NATO, and the EU is Sweden's most important security policy platform. Our strategy is to build security together with others. We are today a respected partner that helps deliver security. What we do is our own choice and based on decisions taken by Sweden. That is how it should remain. There is no room for compromise on this point. Moderate party leader Ulf Christensen said, I find it very difficult to understand how NATO membership can be ruled out in a situation where Russia is increasingly acting like the Soviet Union. I am not looking for a fight on the NATO issue, but to now rule out what are crucial security guarantees for the whole free world is difficult for me to understand. US and European officials are set to meet with their Russian counterparts in a variety of high-stakes meetings as the West looks for diplomatic off-ramps amid fears of a renewed Russian invasion of Ukraine. Moscow has demanded a sweeping series of security guarantees, including a halt to any eastward expansion of the bloc and limits on its deployments to recent member states. A readout of a call between U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and his counterparts from the Nordic countries noted participants reaffirmed the right of each country to choose its alliances. Swedish ministers' comments follow similar remarks made by Finnish President Sauli Nienisto in his New Year's address. Finland's room to maneuver and freedom of choice also includes the possibility of military alignment and applying for NATO membership, should we ourselves so decide. Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova warned in late December 2021 that NATO accession for either Finland or Sweden, which maintain policies of neutrality during the Cold War, would entail serious military and political consequences, which would require an adequate response on Russia's part. Russia's 2014 invasion of Ukraine prompted a surge in defense investments in Sweden not seen since the 1950s. In 2020, the country's parliament voted to increase defense spending by 40% over the next five years and increase the size of the armed forces from 60,000 to 90,000 people. The Swedish foreign minister stressed the importance of the country's security cooperation with the Baltic and Nordic states as well as the United Kingdom and the United States. She said, it's my deep conviction that being militarily non-aligned, and, with those security agreements with other countries and a strong defense is the best way to keep the Swedish people safe. Martin Hurt believes the membership process of Finland and Sweden will take a long time due to some reasons. These two countries do not have a fast track to join NATO. If they apply for membership, they must be able to show they can meet NATO's political, military, legal, resource and security preconditions, or at least have a plan to address any obvious shortfalls. Much of the media has simplified these messages to read that NATO membership is in the hands of Helsinki and Stockholm alone. In reality, all current members of the alliance would have to approve each application. The Finnish and Swedish security debate often mentions their own NATO option. The official view in Helsinki is that Finland retains the option of joining a military alliance and of applying for NATO membership. 
In Sweden, a majority in parliament views joining NATO as a possible security policy option if deemed necessary. But there is no fast track to NATO membership, even for democratic, stable and wealthy partnership for peace partners such as Finland and Sweden. This NATO option is an invention of Helsinki and Stockholm. NATO has no policy or prior agreement that would give Finland and Sweden more right to NATO membership than, say, Georgia or Ukraine. If Finland or Sweden apply, the hesitation of just one ally would be enough to delay or block their acceptance. Finland and Sweden could join the alliance only by following the usual procedure. This means they would need to meet NATO's political, military, legal, resource and security preconditions, or at least have a plan to address any obvious shortfalls. The requirements include public support for membership, where neither Finland nor Sweden currently excels. According to a December 2021 public opinion poll commissioned by the Finnish Advisory Board for Defence Information, only 24% of the respondents supported Finnish membership of NATO while 51% were against. A 2020 poll conducted in Sweden by the SOM Institute found 27% of the respondents supported Swedish membership and 32% against it. A crucial consideration is that NATO membership is not only about legal and political arrangements but also the development of collective military capability. NATO must work to ensure that its command and force structures allow it to fulfill its three core tasks. In terms of Sweden and Finland's possible accession, the existing allies will certainly question the benefit to NATO of admitting new members that have not yet been able to fully contribute to the security of all other allies. In short, the a NATO option, imagined in Helsinki and Stockholm is far from guaranteed but would be a lengthy and difficult process. The accession of either of these two countries is anything but imminent. Experts believe Russia's calls to limit NATO expansion and activity are likely to be a non-starter, but there may be scope for progress on broader questions of European security arrangements where both sides have an interest in de-escalating tensions. Swedish Minister Linda, who served as head of the OSCE until December 2021, pointed out the importance of arms controls, rules on military exercises, and confidence-building measures. She said, there is some part of the proposals that I think is interesting to discuss. She also said although Moscow's intentions remain unclear, it is best to try and find a diplomatic solution that can avert a military intervention, to give diplomacy and dialogue a chance to work is always better than military activities. And we know that Russia has both the means and the will to use the military. This is time to share your opinion. Should Sweden and Finland join NATO?